Let's go into this amazing experiment that's only 20 years old and it's changed the way physicists look at not just the nature, not just quantum computing, but the nature of the universe. What you're about to learn is absolutely incredible because the delayed choice quantum eraser experiment is merely the double slit with entangled photons. So in the double stick, traditionally we just put through normal photons. In this one, we actually put through entangled photons. Okay, now here is the delayed choice quantum eraser experiment. If you've never seen it before, it looks very complicated at first, but it truly isn't. And I'll, I'll take you through this step by step. So there's absolutely no need to worry about it being difficult or anything. This is merely the double slit here. So this is just like the opening slide from the double slit. And here are the two slits. But what happens is it hits a BBO crystal. So the photons immediately go through the slits and then they're entangled and then they go through a prism which sends them in different ways and you can see here the red is a pair of entangled photons and the turquoise is a pair of entangled photons and because of the prism one goes that way on the red one one goes this way and one goes the other way and then the beauty of this is that it goes through all of these smoke and mirrors, which are the quant going through these slits here is what's called the witch way. And if you remember from the double slit, we're not allowed to know the path of the electron Heisenberg's uncertainty principle. So we're not allowed to know the witch way. And if we do, it collapses the wave function. The entangled photons are sent in different ways to these detectors. There are five detectors, detector zero, and you, you must look at them. At, the, at these detectors, they actually show either an interference pattern, which means it is a wave, or a clump pattern, which is two vertical lines, which means the photon arrived there as a particle. By sending the photon in an, an entangled pair and sending one one way and one another way, we can do amazing experiment. Okay, so what was the point of the delayed choice quantum eraser experiment? It was two points. First of all, with the double slit, people were saying, well, hold on. When you measure the photon, you are actually disturbing it because measurement is by sending a photon to collide with another photon and come back and say there was a photon there. Scientists said, hold on a minute, the act of measurement is affecting the whether there's interference or clump. So this experiment doesn't have any measurement. It just has a way of manipulating with smoke and mirrors. It can mean that we can know which way it, it, the photon travel. And then it's interesting to see what effect that has. So no measurement. Secondly, it shows us that events, uh, the future can affect events that have already happened at least in the quantum realm. But remember, we're all made up of quantum particles. The experiment was only done in 1999, not that long ago, by Kim, Yu, Kulik, Shi, and Scully. It's, you can think of it as the double slit with entanglement. And the two concepts that you have to understand are the which way and the delayed choice. The which way is which slit does the photon travel through 
And the delayed choice is that because of the apparatus in the experiment, the actual hitting of the back screen is delayed because it's going through mirrors and beam splitters. And that's what causes all this amazing mystery of quantum physics. Because this doesn't happen in the Newtonian world, the classical world, that you know, you cannot know these two things. And I stress that it's not that we haven't got sophisticated equipment. It's the fact nature, it appears, and interpretation is that nature is actually not allowing us to know. Because as soon as we put a camera there, we want to find out the, the wave, the interference pattern changes to a clump. You need to understand, you know, all of the equipment. So. Here, I'll go through the equipment one by one. Uh, so this is just the photon coming in. It's going through the double slit, just like the normal double slit. But as soon as it goes through, it hits what's called a BBO crystal, barium borate oxidized crystal, which creates two entangled photons. And those entangled photons will always give the same result. So it immediately goes through there and then it immediately goes through a prism which deflects the um, entangled pair. So it forces one, one ent entangled photon to go one way and its twin to go the other way. So there's an entangled pair here one is, a, one is made to go this way to detect a zero and the other one is made to go this way which is far more complicated. It goes through a prism which then directs it onto a beam splitter. So this here is a beam splitter and we have three. A beam splitter is an amazing piece of equipment and down it's a combination of polarization, vertical and horizontal, which I won't go into now. But the, the point is that when a photon hits a beam splitter, 50% of the time it will go straight through. So this photon here is coming to beam splitter B and it just goes through 50% of the time. And then 50% of the time it will bounce off. And that's the same with any beam splitter. Now these ends here are just mirrors, so they will reflect every time. So here it might, 50% of the time will go through the beam splitter, it will hit the mirror, 100% of the time it will reflect. It hits another beam splitter, 50% of the time it will go through, 50% of the time it will be deflected. So you can see that the entangled pair, each of the entangled photons goes through the experiment, through the apparatus in a different journey. And the magical thing here is by examining the detectors, we can see whether it hit that detector as a wave, in which case you'll get an interference pattern, or as a particle, in which case you'll get a clump. We have the BBO crystal, which entangles the particles. We have the lens, which focuses on a detector, the beam splitter, 50% 50, 50 chance of going through or being re reflected. The prism, which um, redirects the photon. And then importantly, we at each detector, we have a different pattern an interference or a clump. Now what this experiment was going to prove was that if we know which way the photons traveled, it will be a clump. But if we don't know which if the waves traveled, which slit it went through, if we don't know that, it will have an interference pattern. This is the crux of it all basically. So let me get my annotation up again and I'll use the stamp this time and I'll drag that out the way. So 
Yeah, what I'm going to do now is let me first of all highlight the detectors. So here's detector zero, here's detector one, here's detector two, detector three, and detector four. So you can clearly see where they all are. Now, this is the crux of it all, and there's no measurement happening, remember. I'm going to now follow the path of, it. there's two pair, um, there's a top slit pair of entangled photons and a bottom slit pair of entangled photons. At detector one, let's look, so here I'm going to take the top um, uh, entangled photon, which is in red. So it's coming through here as an entangled photon. It's entangled. One entangled photon has gone through here and it's reached detector zero. Its twin particle has gone all the way down here and all the way through here and we don't have to worry about where it's all gone. We just need to know at this stage, it's gone a different way. That's the top entangled pair. Now, the bottom slit entangled pair has come in here. It's been entangled. It's gone through the prism. And then the top one has gone here. So, Detector zero, let's forget all the other detectors, just detector zero. So I'm now asking you, so if you could try and answer in chat, I'd be very grateful if somebody can answer this, but you can see that at detector zero, we don't know which slit it came through. It could have been the top one from the top slit or the top one from the bottom slit. We don't know. So if we don't know which way it's gone, do, can anybody tell me what the pattern we would expect to see at D0? Oh, thank you, Sheetal. Yes, and you're exactly right. It's an interference pattern. Why? because we don't know its path so because we don't know nature says i'll say nature there's a lot of different interpretations but um, nature doesn't know whether it's the top one or the bottom one or the you know the top photon of the bottom state we don't know which slit it went through so there's an interference pattern Let's compare that. Now, I could go through each detector, but let's just compare that with detector three. And let's look at detector three. Now, detector three can only come from the bottom slit. So we know we might, not, we're not measuring it. But we have the potential to know that at detector three, we know which slit it went through. Because if it's going through the red, you see the red, no matter which, no matter where it's deflected, no matter where it goes through, no matter what happens, it cannot get to detector three. Detector three can only be the bottom entangled photon going through the bottom slit. So the photon comes through here, it's entangled, it goes through here and it goes through a prism. And then it gets to beam splitter A. Now it may well go through because remember a beam splitter gives you a 50% chance of going through. So we may well go through and carry on through the system. But 50% of the time, it will be deflected and it will come here. And 
it will hit D3 on, you know, uh, every so often, 50% of the time, it will end up here. But no matter what happens, it cannot come from either entangled photon going through the top slit. Therefore, we know can only come from the bottom slit. So we're not measuring it, but we have the, but we know it's come through the bottom slit. We know the which way. I'm going to give you another question. Now, at D3, where we know which way it comes, can someone tell me what pattern would we expect to see at D3? Stephen, thank you. It is the clump. Now, that is amazing. Think about this for a second. This is a subatomic particle. This is a million, 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 million times smaller than a speck of dust. Yet, when it goes through complicated apparatus that you see here, how can it change its fundamental form whether an observer can find out which way it's traveled? It's, it's amazing. But think about what's happening. How can that be? It's just amazing. There's no measurement, there's no interference. It's not one photon hitting another and then knocking it to one side. Now guys, can it get any weirder? Well, this is quantum mechanics. So you know the answer to this, don't you? It can get a lot weirder because there's something I haven't told you. We're now going to introduce time into this experiment. You can see, let's just take the red and where's my um, stamp? So we're only going to take the red. The top entangled photon goes on this short distance to D0. Short, not uncomplicated, direct and it hits D0. Its entangled partner, who must always show the same spin, i.e. if the top entangled photon is a wave, then its twin has to be a wave. If the top entangled photon is a particle, then its twin entangled photon has to be a particle. So that one's gone that way, but this one, it takes longer because it's going in the in, in the case of d1 it's traveling a lot further it's going through beam splitters it's bouncing off mirrors it's going through another beam splitter and it ends up at d1 so there's a time difference albeit measured in nanoseconds but there's a difference. Here's what the amazing thing is. Well, it's all amazing, but this is unbelievable. When we send a photon through, this one registers either a clump or a interference. So this goes through and it makes a measurement at detector zero. Now, let's just say it's, let's in fact say that its partner goes through here, through here, la -di -da, -di da and gets to D1, which is an interference pattern, then D0 will show an interference pattern as well. Perhaps what you would expect. However, when the first one goes through and hits D0, let's just say the second one goes through here, is deflected from beam splitter B, and has a clump pattern at D4. Well, if we look at D0, it will be a clump pattern. Entangled photons will always give the same result. I've got it. We send photons in. We have the ability now to send one at a time. So the first one might 
be deflected and hits D4, in which and this is not an entangled photon, just an ordinary photon, it would go through and it would be detected at D4. Um, and the wave function would be collapsed and the same as D3. So Sheetal's completely correct. And again, there's been no measurement here. However, remember the second entangled photon, anything that goes through here, and this is what we call the quantum eraser, where even though we, like here at D3, we know which slit it's gone through, D3 and D4, we know D4, top slit, D3, bottom slit. But if you send another photon through and it goes through, so that it's just chance, it's going through the beam splitter and then it will be an interference pattern. But what I'm saying to you, and this is the important thing, whatever happens, D0 will always, and I mean after millions of experiments, it will always equal the same as what its entangled photon ends up as. So its entangled photon, by chance, will end up at D1, D2, D3, or D4. This is the delayed, because it takes longer to go through this apparatus than the other one. So we're delaying whether it's, and it's by chance, whether it's going to be an interference pattern or a club. It just depends on whether it's deflected off the beam splitters or it goes through both or it goes through one is deflected off the other. We don't know, but somehow it's entangled twin already knew what was going to happen in the future. No matter what, something very, very strange is happening. 